The ZX Spectrum turns 40, GitHub Desktop 3.0, what is the edge, anyway? And a classic Mac project in the browser that you don't want to miss. All that and more on this episode of The Download. Welcome back to another episode of The Download. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Developer Advocate at GitHub. And as a reminder, go ahead and subscribe to our channel on YouTube, uh, like the video, turn on notifications, you know the drill, do all the things. Uh, so longtime viewers may know about my penchant for wearing ironic merch from startups or tech companies of the past. Now, apparently collecting merch from dead companies is not a common activity, who knew? So NPR actually found my nonsense interesting enough for a story. Link down below. Thank you for indulging me. Thank you, NPR, for talking to me. I just had to give that a shout out. My hoodie this week is just GitHub, so it's boring, um, but I should hopefully have some more stuff to show off on future shows. Okay, so moving on into actual news. So the first thing that I want to talk about is the 40th anniversary of the ZX, excuse me, we're British, so I should say it properly, the ZX Spectrum. So the ZX Spectrum, for those of you who are not familiar, was an 8-bit personal computer that was one of the best-selling computers of its era and actually the best-selling microcomputer in the UK. And it isn't hyperbole to say that the ZX Spectrum inspired many of the people who are building software today, as well as a whole generation of computer users. And my pal and colleague, Lee Riley, wrote a fantastic blog post on the ZX Spectrum on the GitHub blog uh, links are down below, that highlights 10 of the coolest projects that are keeping the magic of the spectrum alive, including emulators, VS Code extensions, cross compilers, so much cool stuff. So amazing work, Lee, and happy anniversary to the spectrum. I love it. And moving on, GitHub Desktop 3.0 was released this week. Now, GitHub Desktop is an app for Mac and Windows that's designed to make the process of working with Git workflows a little bit more approachable. And the big thing with version 3.0 is that it now has better integration with GitHub pull requests. So not only are there now high signal notifications for pull requests, so like you're not gonna be inundated with every PR and every project you might have on your local environment, just the stuff that actually matters, um, but you can also now uh, see the checks of pull requests so that you know your code is ready for production. There are more details in the blog post that I've got linked down below, but I wanted to send my congrats to the team and also point out that the GitHub uh, desktop repo is on GitHub, naturally, and you can uh, file issues or make your own PRs there if you would like to follow along with the process or contribute. Speaking of GitHub, I just want to add a quick note uh, to say that if you have used the git.io short URL in the past, we highly encourage you to update your links if possible and move to another short URL service. So git.io actually went read-only back in January, and the original plan was to shut off redirects on April 29th. But after hearing from uh, the community, the teams decided to archive current git.io links to a new read-only service that can serve redirects longer term. So yay for fighting against link rot. Having said that, uh, the team, um, when they're doing their analysis, they might end up removing some individual links that point to spammy, malicious, or 404 links. So there are more um, details linked below, but I just wanted to point that out. Next, I want to give a shout out to a great blog post from Netlify's Salma Al Alam Naylor, who wrote a really good explainer on what The Edge is. And no, I don't mean the guitarist from U2. And for the kids out there, U2 is a rock band that puts music on your phone without asking. Anyway, Salma does a great job of explaining how serverless functions work, hence servers are actually involved, and what edge computing actually means. Really, really great stuff. And speaking of great stuff, the team over at Okta has a really fantastic guide to using Elasticsearch in your Node.js app. And I'm personally starting to get more into Node again, and I really appreciated this guide. There's even a GitHub repo that you can follow along with, so really good stuff. It's linked, you know the drill, down below. And uh, speaking of cool GitHub repos, uh, you know, Twitter's been in the news a lot lately. Wonder why. Look, I for one welcome our Elon overlord, but if you're interested in various social media alternatives, you should check out the Mastodon project, which is on GitHub. It's fully open source and it's federated. And you can host your own instance or you can join any of the large number of existing instances out there. Now, is Mastodon gonna take over the world? Probably not. Am I really glad that it's around and an option for people who want to create their own communities? Absolutely. Um, so the link to the repo and the project's homepage is down below. Good job to the Mastodon team for keeping things going on. All right, now it's time for my pick of the week. Okay, so I'm a 90s kid and Windows 95 will always be my greatest love. 
Having said that, my earliest memories of computing are largely from the classic Mac era, including the illustrious System 7 and the, well, you know, they sure tried Mac OS 8. Now, for non-Apple history nerds, Mac OS 8 is kind of like the Apple equivalent of Windows Vista, but with fewer scars for the users. There were also fewer users. Anyway, the amazing uh, Mihai uh, Paparita has created a project called Infinity Mac, which he describes as an instant um, quadra in your browser, and man, does it deliver. So you can go to system7.app or macOS8.app and have a fully featured 68K Mac in your browser. It's beyond cool. You could even run games and other apps from the Macintosh garden on it. BB Edit, which is 30 years old and still doesn't suck, is even there, which is just the best. Uh, Mihai has a really great write-up on his blog about how he was able to do this sorcery, and he's got the source code up on GitHub. Genuinely, this is so cool. I cannot tell you how much I love every part of this. It makes me so happy. It takes me back to 1995 when I was like, hacking around on the school computer labs instead of paying attention to, I don't know, learning to type or something. I did learn to type, just not in those classes. It's really, really great. Uh, be sure to check out the links in the show notes down below. And let me know what operating system you would most like to see emulated in the browser in the comments down below, as well as your thoughts on any of the other stories that we discussed. That does it for me. Now we will be off next week because I will be celebrating my nephew's first birthday. I'm a very proud aunt, uh, but go ahead and like and subscribe and all that good stuff here on GitHub's YouTube channel for even more cool nerd stuff. See you next time. Thank you.